Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make this little teddy bear for yourself or your stuffed animal and it's made using just one fuzzy sock. Now let's get started! Like I said before, this teddy bear is going to be made out of one fuzzy sock. So here is mine. I had to get a pack on Amazon to get this color, but it's pretty long. This is about 12 inches, so I was able to make the teddy bear out of just one of these but you might need to use two if yours is smaller. I also cut out little patterns just to use as a guide, but this is kind of optional. You can always just eyeball it, but if you want the exact size of mine, you can follow these patterns. I'll have them linked in the description box as always. The first thing I'm doing is pinning down the pattern for the head, and that's just so I know how far to cut down the toe. So that's the first cut I'm gonna be making. And next, I'm gonna turn the sock inside out but the sock kind of looks the same on the inside and outside, so it doesn't really matter that much. But now I'm going to pin on the body piece. And instead of cutting this out, I'm actually going to go straight to my sewing machine and use the paper as a guide where to sew. So I'm just going to try to sew around this outline for the feet using a really small straight stitch. After that, mine looked like this. As you can see, I didn't do a great job on the left foot. I kind of cut into the paper a little. But that's okay, because I can always just rip the paper off. And just a note about sewing this in the sewing machine, since the sock is so thick and you're sewing through both layers, make sure you use a little bit of a bigger stitch because the stitch I used wasn't too small but they turned out really tiny. Or you could always sew the whole thing by hand which is obviously more work but it is doable. So when I turn this inside out this will turn into the body and feet of the bear. And I forgot to point out that the heel of the sock will actually be the butt of the bear so it can sit up on its own. So when you're placing on your pattern, make sure the feet go a little bit lower than the heel of the sock. And now I'm just going to stuff this. I happen to have stuffing, but you can always use fabric scraps or yarn scraps for this. I'm really trying to stick the feet out so it's obvious that they're feet, but I'm just going to edit my pattern a little so the feet are a little more obvious. After I've stuffed it as much as I want, I can close this up by grabbing a needle and thread. I chose black thread so you could hopefully see what I was doing better, but that didn't really work. But luckily this stitch is really easy. All I'm going to do is a running stitch, and all that is is just putting your needle in and out of the fabric. I'm not even pulling my needle all the way through between each stitch because you can do a lot at a time. But I'm just going to keep moving my needle in and out of the fabric until I go all the way around the edge of this circle. And if you pull on the thread slightly as you go, the opening will start to close. But once you get to where you started, you can pull the thread as tight as possible and that should close the opening. And to lock my stitch, I'm just inserting my needle through the edge. And as I do that, a loop will form. And I'm just going to put my needle through that loop and pull it tight. And after doing that one more time to get a double knot, I can just trim off my thread. And there is the body done. Next, I'm going to focus on the head for a little bit. So I'm going to grab that toe of the sock and I can just start stuffing that. This is where you can make the head as big or as small as you want. I made mine almost the size of the body just because I wanted that look. I was kind of inspired by the style of Jelly Cat's little collection because I think they're super cute. And so I ended up stuffing the sock pretty full. Here I am trying it on the body and I think it was too big so I removed a little stuffing. Now I'm just going to close this up the same way I closed up the body. And that's just doing a running stitch around the entire open edge. After closing it up the same way I closed up the body, the head is done. Obviously it's just a ball right now, but I'll be adding the face and ears in a little bit. But first I need to cut out and make all the things I need to add, so I'm first going to do the arms. I'm lining the side up with kind of that closed edge of the sock because that's one less edge to have to sew, and at least the two pieces will be already connected at one side. Before I sew this, I'm going to open it up and fold it good side to good side. But to be honest, I think I lost track of what the good side and bad side of the sock are. I'm pretty sure they look the same, so it doesn't really matter. Now I'm just going to sew around the open edge, but leave the bottom part open. After doing that one more time for the other arm, I'm going to turn the whole thing inside out and start stuffing them. Then I'm going to set them aside for now and work on making the ears. To make the most of the rest of the sock, I'm just going to cut the sock open first and then fold it a different way. And then I'm going to cut out two layers using my ear pattern. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to cut out that tail piece. Now I still have to cut these along where they're connected because that's a side I plan to leave open so I can turn it inside out. But now I'm going to use my sewing machine to sew around the curved edges. 
After that, I can turn all of these inside out. And to make these a little easier to eventually sew onto the bear's head, I'm going to close up that open edge with a needle and thread. I'm just using a basic stitch called, I think, a whip stitch. It's where you just continually keep putting your needle through the same side of the fabric, so the thread kind of goes over that raw edge. So as you can see, I'm continually only putting my needle in through the back, and I'm just doing that until the entire ear is closed. Luckily, with this fuzzy sock material, it is really hard to see any of the stitches. So now I can just lock my stitch the same way I did before. And now you can actually go straight into sewing this onto the bear's head, but I'm going to do the other ear first. After doing the other ear, now I'm going to sew this onto the head. As you can see, I just left the needle and thread on there. And now I'm going to find the place where I want to put this, and I'm going to be using a ladder stitch to sew this onto the head. This was a little hard to show with this fuzzy fabric, but I'll link a video down below where it shows it more clearly. So basically, I'm going to do one running stitch in the fabric of the head, and then I'm going to do one running stitch at the base of the ear. And I'm really only going through the front layer of the ear because I'm going to go all the way around. So then I'm going to do another running stitch into the head, and then another into the ear. And now I'm just going to continue doing that all the way around the ear until it's fully connected. And as you're doing this, you can even kind of shape the ear by just adding extra stitches and pulling them tighter. Once I've made it all the way around to the back, I can lock my stitch and cut off my thread. And now I can do the same thing to the other ear. Just like magic, it is on there, and now I can cut out the snout. I'm just checking my pattern's a good size for this head, and now I'm just going to pin that down on the rest of my sock material and cut it out. Now I'm going to grab my needle and thread to sew this on. And like I did with the ears, I'm going to use a ladder stitch to do this. And it took me a while to get the hang of this, so I'm just going to skip to the part where I showed a little better. So like I did before, I'm doing one running stitch in the face of the bear. Then I'm folding over the edge of that oval piece and doing a running stitch through that. And I know in the beginning I was going through that whole folded edge to do the running stitch, but you really only have to go through the part that's folded under. Either way, the stitches are really hard to see, so it doesn't really matter. But just wanted to point out that that's the way I should have done this. Once I've gotten towards the bottom where there's still a small opening, I'm going to start stuffing the snout. And after it's as full as I want, I can continue doing the ladder stitch to close up the bottom. And then I can just lock my stitch and that's it. Next, I'm going to be stitching on the nose. And I know I didn't show it, but here I have a pretty big needle threaded with some brown embroidery floss. You could also use thread, but embroidery floss will just make this faster since it's thicker. And I'm entering from the bottom of the head to hide that end. And you'll just want to poke your needle through around where you want the top of the nose to be. Then I'm going to put my needle in straight across from that, and then have the needle come out right below where that embroidery floss is coming out. After pulling that through, I have the first line for the top of the nose. And it's kind of crooked, but I can go over and make another one to straighten it out. But now I just need to keep making more lines really close together and make them smaller and smaller as I go to form an upside down triangle. Since the fabric is fuzzy, it can kind of hide the embroidery floss, so you might have to go over it a few times, but it shouldn't take too long. Once I got to the bottom, I actually wanted the top of the nose to be a little wider, so I just went back up there to make the lines a little longer. Then I brought my needle back through the bottom of the head, tied it like I always do, and then cut the thread. And before I tied it off, I should have made the little line under the nose, but I forgot to do that, so I'll do it later. Okay, next I'm going to be adding the eyes. You can use beads or even buy specific eyes at the store, but I actually made my own out of polymer clay. I just rolled them into balls and put a needle through it so there'd be a hole. And now I have my needle with black thread, and I'm just looking where I should put them. And once I have my placement, I'm going to insert my needle through there and straight through to the other side where the other eye is going to be. And if you're just using a regular needle, you may have to squeeze the bear's face together to get it to go through, but I got mine through. And going really close to where I pulled my needle through, I'm going to go straight through back to the other side. And I'm pulling on my thread kind of tightly to leave little indentations for where the eyes are going to go. And after doing that one more time to add that second indentation, I can grab my bead and insert it on the needle. And then I can put my needle in really close to where the thread's coming out and back through to the other side. Then I can do the same thing for the other eye. Now as close as I can get to that other eye, I'm going to lock my stitch. Then I'm just pulling that through the bottom of the head to hide that end. And there you have it. 
The face is almost done, but like I said before, I forgot to add that little line under the nose earlier, so I'm just doing that now real quick, and I'm just using regular thread for this. You could also add a smile at this point, but I feel like that can really change the face, and I really liked how this looked so far, so I did not want to mess it up. After that, the bare face is done, so now I'm going to get back to the body, and now I'm going to sew on the arms. I'm going to sew these on kind of at the top of the body, so it'll kind of be like they're coming out of the neck, and that'll kind of make it look more seamless, but you can always sew them lower if you want. At first, I'm pretty sure I just did a straight stitch to sew this on, so just sewing straight across the top of the arm, but you could also use a ladder stitch for this. And once I sewed across the top, I flipped it over and started sewing the bottom part of the arm. And for this part, you definitely want to use a ladder stitch. And after that, the arm was technically fully attached, but as you can see, it kind of stuck out like this. And I didn't like that, so I went under the arm again and did a few more stitches lower down on the arm, and that kind of held it down a little bit. After doing the same thing for the other arm, it looked kind of like a baked chicken, but it's all going to come together once I add the head. But first, I'm going to add the tail. An easier way to make the tail would also just be cutting out a circle of fabric and then doing a running stitch around the edge and then just pulling it tight and that would close up the tail. But now I'm just going to sew this on using a ladder stitch like I did with the ears and I probably don't need to say too much more about this because you've seen me do this a lot during this video. After that, I can finally finish this bear up by attaching the head. I'm once again going to be using the ladder stitch to attach them. I actually started in the back to help hide that end of the thread, but I wish I'd started in the front because it's kind of hard to make sure the head's on straight when the face isn't facing you. So I ended up sewing mine on a little bit crooked. He's now just always looking slightly to the right, and it's not a big deal, but I think I could have avoided that if I just started stitching it on from the front. So I'm just going to continue doing one running stitch in the neck, then one in the head, until I get all the way around to the back. And I'm pretty sure I went around one more time just to make sure it was really on there. After I'm done, I can lock my stitch as always, and this teddy bear is done! Now here I am desperately trying to turn his head on straight, but you know, it was sewed on there, so that's how it was. Leave some comments what you think I should name him. I was kind of thinking like graham cracker or chip because he looks like a chocolate chip cookie without chocolate chips. And just for size reference, he's about as tall as my hand, so a little big to be a stuffed animal stuffed toy, or he could just be one of those jumbo teddy bears which everyone loves. I also forgot to mention he can even sit up on his own, so that's a little bonus. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, comment any video suggestions you have, and I'll see you next time. Bye!